You might know what a histogram looks like, but have you seen those with red, green, and blue colors on it? Let's talk about RGB histograms on today's episode of... Ask David Bergman! Hey there everybody, welcome back. Here I am, as always, answering your photography questions right here on Adorama TV. Today's question comes from Michael Yu, and he wants to know, on the newest mirrorless cameras, I've seen the option to shoot with an RGB histogram. How does this differ from a luminance histogram? Why would I use it and are there any downsides? It's a great question, Michael, and I appreciate you sending that in. Let's go ahead and take this one step at a time. First of all, what exactly is a histogram? A histogram is just a graph showing the distribution of brightness levels in your image. You might see one displayed in your camera and you also might see it in post-processing programs like Photoshop, Lightroom, and Capture One when you're viewing an image. The left end is solid black with no detail, and the right end is solid white. All the midtones are in the middle, and they gradually go from black to white. Then up and down shows you how much of your image contains each of those levels of brightness. And you can use this information in a number of different ways. For example, it'll show if you've severely underexposed or overexposed your photo. If there's data pushed way over to the left, it means you've got parts of your photo that are just pure black with absolutely no detail. Same thing on the right side with pure white. Now what that's called is clipping. It means that the data has hit the limit of what the sensor can record in that part of the image and there's no way to bring back the detail once it's gone. Now some photographers will say that a perfect histogram is one where everything is in the middle without touching either of the edges, like in this picture I made of Luke Combs singing in the studio recently while he was working on his new album. Now, because all of the tones are in the middle, that means I've captured detail throughout all parts of the photo, and I've got more latitude in post-processing if I want to lighten or darken it. However, photography is creative, and there's no right or wrong way to do this. Here's a photo I made of the band Shinedown playing Madison Square Garden last week. Just judging from the histogram, you'd think I'd have some problems with this spike all the way at the top. But the band uses a lot of pyro in their show, and I made the creative decision to let those flames go brighter than the camera can capture. That's because if I had exposed the image to keep the flames away from the edge of the histogram, then the lead singer Brent would have been too dark in my opinion. Now that's totally a subjective call, and you may or may not agree with my decision. But the point is, in this case, the histogram shows me that the flames are overexposed and blown out with no detail. And I'm just fine with that in this case. Now, one important thing to point out here is that the histogram you see on the camera is not based on all the data in a RAW file. It's only showing you what's displayed at that moment. So on the camera, the histogram would show the tones that are in the JPEG preview that's on the back of the camera. And in post-processing, it shows you the graph based on the image you're looking at and will adjust as you make changes. Now, one of the reasons to shoot RAW in the first place is that it gives you more latitude than a JPEG can display and save. I can actually prove this by using the histogram. This shot of Central Park South in New York City has a lot of contrast. It's challenging to expose for both the dark buildings and the bright sky. If I was shooting only JPEGs, I'd probably need to choose which to expose for and give up on the other. So if I pick my camera exposure to see detail in the buildings, the sky is gonna be blown out. You can see that in the histogram with that spike up at the top. Now on a JPEG, that white part is not recoverable. If you look at the histogram at the edge where I've hit the brightest white part, that's the sky. When I darken the image in post, all it does is slide that solid hard edge down, which makes the sky turn a very unnatural gray. But if I do the same thing with the original RAW file, when I darken the image, you can see that there was data hidden above that edge that I just wasn't seeing. This time, the sky doesn't just go gray, it actually shows detail, and you can now see blue sky and clouds. Now, of course, the buildings are now too dark, so I'd need to either do a composite or some HDR work to get a single image with both parts where I want them. That's a completely different video, but the point is that the histogram shows me that the RAW file actually has more data in it that I can use if I want to. Hey, while I've got you, do me a favor and hit that like button, subscribe to Adorama's YouTube channel, and go ahead and tap that bell icon so you get notified when new episodes go live. It really helps us out and lets me know that you want more free educational videos from me and the other photo hosts here on Adorama TV. Also, if you've got a photography question you want me to answer, you know what to do by now. You just go to askdavidbergman.com, fill out the form on that site, and I just might pick your question and answer right here on a future show. All right, now, the histogram I've been showing you so far is called a luminance histogram. 
But as I'm guessing you already know, based on the topic of this video, there's actually another kind called an RGB histogram. To understand what that is, I need to talk about how our cameras see color. Every digital sensor has millions of tiny light sensitive areas called photosites. They don't measure color directly. They only record how much light is hitting them. To get color, the sensor has a red, green, or blue filter over each photosite. So each one only measures the brightness of light in that part of the spectrum. Your camera then takes all of that data and combines it to create the full color pixels you see in your final image. Now this RGB method of displaying color isn't unique to cameras. It's also how many TVs, computer monitors, and phone screens work. They use tiny red, green, and blue subpixels to create all the colors that we see. Different technologies do this in different ways, but in general, by blending various amounts of red, green, and blue light, we can get the full spectrum of color. So an RGB histogram shows all three separate graphs, one for each color channel. Each channel shows the brightness levels for just that color. Some histograms show them on top of each other and some show them separately. Reading the RGB histogram is just like reading the luminance one. The left side is the darker area and the right side is brighter. But now you can see if you're clipping any of those individual colors instead of just the overall brightness. In this photo of Kate wearing a red top, the RGB histogram tells me that the red channel is blown out. Instead of darkening the overall exposure, I know that I can just work on that channel that's causing the issue. In this case, you can see that lowering the saturation of the red channel brings the image back into balance. This photo now can be reproduced better on a screen or in a print, and I don't, didn't have to change the color of the rest of the image to make it happen. So Michael wanted to know why you'd use an RGB histogram over a luminance one. Well, they both have their place, but the main reason is simply that the RGB one gives you more precise information. You can see exactly which channel is at risk of clipping and adjust your exposure accordingly. A luminance histogram doesn't tell you anything about individual color channels. So you could have one of those channels completely blown out and the luminance histogram might still look fine. And especially if you're shooting JPEGs, which I hope you're not doing, but if you are, you can check the RGB histogram in your camera to make exposure adjustments before you press the shutter. Once you clip a red dress or a flower, you just can't recover it later. The small screen on your camera isn't calibrated and it can also be hard to see in bright daylight. The histogram is a more reliable way to judge, especially when you're outdoors in bright sunlight. Not every mirrorless camera shows a live RGB histogram when you're shooting, however. Some only display it after the fact when reviewing an image. You'll have to check your camera settings to see what's available. Even if it only shows up after capture, it's still a great tool to help you evaluate your exposure and avoid any surprises later. Now, there are a few other reasons to use RGB over luminance. It does help you to judge your white balance and notice any color casts. If one color is significantly brighter than the others, you'll know that there's more of that color in your image. You may want it like that, just like my shine down photo with all those flames, but you might not. This lets you see all of that data without relying on a screen that could be inaccurate. Even if you're shooting black and white, the camera is still capturing color underneath. If you clip a channel while shooting, it can affect the tonal range in your final black and white conversion. Another reason is for photographers who subscribe to the expose to the right method. That just means you prefer to overexpose your images a little bit to capture as much data as possible with the least amount of noise and then go ahead and darken it in post. For photographers who do that, seeing all three channels instead of just the luminance can be really helpful in preventing going too far on any of the colors. Overall, you could say that using the RGB histogram gives you more information about your photos. By looking at the data before you take the picture, you can make informed decisions about what it is you're gonna capture. Now, Michael also asked if there are any downsides to using an RGB histogram. I do think they're a little harder to read as opposed to a simple luminance one. Also, since it's not based on the RAW file, any histogram in camera is not gonna give you the true range of what you're really capturing. If you're using a high contrast or vivid picture style setting, for example, the histogram might show clipping that's not actually present in the RAW file. So if you're a RAW shooter and want your histogram to be as accurate as possible, you should use a flat or a neutral picture style. The only other downside I can really think of is that you might rely too much on the data. If I'm being completely honest, I don't think I look at a histogram, either luminance or RGB, more than once or twice a year. 
I shoot almost exclusively using the electronic viewfinder, and I have my eye pressed up against that eye cup as close as I can. That blocks out most of the ambient light. By doing that, it gives me a good look at my image. I don't need the data to tell me what my picture is gonna look like. I can just see the picture. Plus, I only shoot raw files, so if I'm a little over or underexposed, I know I'll be able to recover the details in post. Like I said before, photography is creative. It's subjective. There's no right or wrong. Only you can decide how you want your images to look. It is kind of interesting to eyeball that data and it might help you learn about color theory and why images look the way they do. But if you only paint by numbers, you won't be able to create a masterpiece. Hope that helps, Michael. Uh, hey, reminder, earlier I mentioned the exposed to the right technique. Well, I did a video a while back using that same New York City photo I showed before explaining why I think ETTR is overrated. Go ahead and click above to check that out. As always, thanks for watching Adorama TV, and I'll see you next time right here on Ask David Burton.